Welcome, Internet, and everyone out there in the ether to episode 35 of Sis and Big Pops Culture. Woohoo! I am Big Pops, aka Mosaic Fan Art, Todd Turner. And I am Sis, aka Hannah Joe, and together we are an adult daughter and father duo. We dive into all things geek, nerd, and fandom. Every episode is family friendly. Family friendly. Indeed. That's our family friendly logo. Is it lo you, logo? No, tune? it's a logo. I don't Are know. We, what do you think? Not a logo. Not, it's a not a logo. Intro intro music. An Hannah, intro what's on ditty. what's on the what's 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 on the ditty we, today? What's on the ditty, Daddy? <laughs> on the schedule, perhaps that's the word that you meant. Schedule. We, Some people say it like schedule. that. The schedule. 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 What's on the schedule? Red Skull schedule. says it like that. That's how Red uh -huh. Skull says it. Um. Somebody found us. Wow. We are going to do uh, <laughs> what's what's going on? <laughs> Give Sorry. us a lowdown, Dad. We are going to do uh, what's on the schedule? What's on the schedule? What's on the schedule? <laughs> I need you to stop. <laughs> okay, so Gil, I'm sorry. I say what we're say going it. to do. We're going to talk about what we're binging, and then we're going to talk about no, we're going to talk about nerd news. Then we're going to talk about what we're binging, and then we're going to talk yes. about your pool list. Then we're going to mm -hmm. talk about a weird comic that I don't question mark big question mark about this comic and gotcha. then we are going to review star trek 2 voyage star trek 4 or the Ooh. voyage home voyage home yes the comic book is why the last man and we'll talk about that why oh it's we, why that's not what why? i typed i typed it's that why wrong the I last typed man last man omnibus well no it's not the omnibus an omnibus you were okay a little bit of a comic book yes. uh, lingo. Omnibus. Teach me your ways. I'm going to type write this down while you're talking. Okay. An omnibus is just what it says. It's omni, all encompassing so the story. So the planetary omnibus that you're like, I thought it was literally just exactly. called the planetary omnibus, but it actually no, is called the planet. It's called the planetary. Comics of planetary. Exactly. Okay. I'm with you. Right. I'm yeah. with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to review the first trade of Why the Last Man, which is actually issues one through six out of 60. The Omnibus collects Dang. them all. Okay. It ran for two years or okay. two and a half, three years. Yeah. So right. anyway. Last Man's Day. Okay. Nerd news. This just in. Hot off the AP wire. Hannah, <laughs> throwing it to you in Bowling Green. Okay. So there's a new Dune commercial that came out. I that was number two on my list. Yeah, did you watch it? I watched it. Did you see? Uh, um, I saw Dave Batista. Is that the guy yeah, that you were unsure say. who it was going to be? No, 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 no. Dave Batista is Raban. He's called the Beast Raban. So he is really bad. And um, I mean, he's he from he's really from bad. the house house. Uh, depends on who you listen to. Some people pronounce them Harkonnen. Some of them per somebody pronounces them Harkonnen. They're the they're the bad house. Not House okay, of Trades, which I'm gonna is I'm going to pause. Okay. Because we've talked about this so much that people who mm -hmm. are just like listening in are like, we have no clue what you're Dune is a comic uh, slash no. also a book. No, no it, is it, is a comic. A, it is a it comic. It is a book, right, but, it, but was turned into a comic. Correct. And it's one of dad's, it's dad's like fave. One of my, it's, it's listed as one of the top 10 science fiction novels of all time. Dune by Frank Herbert. And so dad and, is straight up high key stoked. Exactly. For this movie mm -hmm. that's coming out in October, like has talked about rewatching all of the old stuff on YouTube on previous episodes. I have. Like watched all of the other t movies that have popped mm -hmm. up. So I yep. saw. I actually have it on mm -hmm. CD so I can listen to it in the car. You do not. Yeah. Hey, Nate got it for me for spring? Christmas. Oh, I knew that. Is that. Did you yeah. listen to it this past spring? I've listened to it like three times. I love that. Yeah. So yeah, the new Dune trailer looks fantastic. The I the sandworm. I'm really excited about it. I've decided it's I gotta teeth, make man. A, I gotta make a mosaic before it comes out. I'm, you I have, gotta, to. have I agree. to. The sandworm, have to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I saw that. So it looks really good. Zendaya looks like she's gonna be good. Timothy Chalamet, our favorite soft boy, is in it, and that'll be fun. I don't even know what that means. Soft don't boy. Don't worry about what? it. Don't worry gotcha. about it. Uh, <laughs> Poe, I don't know his name, uh, who was also in oh, Annihilation. Dameron. Oscar Isaacs, who's sure. going to be Moon Knight. He is not. Yes. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. He's going to be yeah. really good in that. 
I'm pretty sure we'd have to double check me, but I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, I believe in you. Papa. So sp- speaking of trailers, um, yes. I talked this week is the San Diego Comic-Con at home. Yes. And we talked about how Marvel and DC last Aren't issue are going to be in them anymore. That, well, very little. Right. Mm. So there's been a lot of trailers that have come out for like different like Paramount, Netflix, cool. um, legendary comics and other comic uh, creators. But one of them that they announced was a new animated Star Trek show for kids. I on saw Paramount that. Plus. And um, it's called it's Star like- Trek Prodigy. And so I watched the trailer. It Is looked it really cool. It looked cool. It looks sort of like the animation style, like the most recent um, Star Wars animation style that Disney's been putting out. Is it that or is it the Camp Crustaceous? Like that kind no, no, of no, vibe? No, 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 no. It, it looks really good. And okay. apparently um, a kid finds, finds a wrecked starship and then and the computer like talks to him and guess who the voice of the computer is. I'll give you one Data. Hint. My favorite captain. Uh, Janeway. Janeway. Kate Mulgrew is is a hologram Janeway. On- I, need, I need everyone to know that I know what who dad's favorite Star Trek captain is. And I didn't even, I just knew it was Captain yeah. Janeway. And I feel good about knowing that. I know. I love Janeway. I know you um, do. Captain Janeway. But, Who's my favorite captain, Trek- dad? Probably Picard. Yeah, I like Picard the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. That's all right. I know. And I love Picard too. He's awesome. I can't help it, but I don't Earl know. Some, I have a, I have a soft spot for Captain Janeway. For Janeway. Um, so cool. yeah, so they're doing that. And of course, they already have an animated Star Trek for adults called that's Lower what, Decks. That's what I thought you were going to talk about. I thought you were going to no. talk about Lower Decks. No, they do have a new season of that coming out, but I thought. I saw that. I, and what a great way to get kids involved in the Star Trek universe, because basically there's not been a jumping on spot. There's, for young there's not, people. not for kids. No. It goes straight to high school or, you know, for sure. 20 somethings. So, yeah. So I thought that was interesting considering we're going to be talking about Star Trek for the voyage home today. And uh, yeah, that was one piece of my news. What else you got? Um, Something about the Russo brothers that I hadn't heard of before that they two um so i'm like just reading this so about Go. two years ago they announced that they secured rights to make a battle of the planets movie and yes, battle of the planets is... was a u.s adaption of a japanese series science yes. ninja team yep gotcha man yep huge and the they thought that the project was dead because it's been like it's been two years since they bought the rights but guess what what it's going forward is it live action <laughs> It's I don't know what it's going to be, but Daniel Casey, who apparently who either is. wrote or directed Fast Nine. Oh no, <laughs> Hannah! Are you kidding He's me? He's on the script for the film. Oh gosh! <laughs> so the best wanna... movie ever. <laughs> You're crazy. So of course, there's another movie that was an adapted, uh, like a anime type was speed racer which we loved and everybody else hates so speed racer was like a bop that's yeah, like a, and, a straight up vibe there's no other give way you a to seizure say it. if you watch it excellent but the best part there are two best parts and you know what they are dad it's pan, pan cook and zeet leapshin yes. pancakes are love and trixie just doing cartwheels the cartwheels in the background over, while everybody else is background. fighting Blood uh-huh. fighting, and she just kicks him. She's just doing cartwheels. Okay, kicks somebody so we'll in the talk face. about it. Let's 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 review that. I we'll love that, that movie. movie sometime. I okay. So, um, okay, so there is a fan made animated video, uh, of a battle royale between Superman, Omni Man, which is the the dad from Invincible, who's a turd nugget. Uh huh. Homelander, who is the extremely powerful villain from the TV show The Boys. I and know and which who is, Homelander is. Which is, you know, that ain't good either. And guess who the fourth powerful person is in this Wonder battle? Woman. No. Okay, let me think. Okay, 
we let have, me set the we stage. A, okay, set the stage. Set the stage. So we Superman, it starts out with Superman, and he's looking around. And it's basically Henry Cavill Superman, you could tell, but it's animated. Okay. And then Omni-Man comes down. And then Homelander comes sure. down. And then you look in the distance, and there's somebody walking with a bag of groceries. And the groceries hit the ground. And he turns around and looks. And it's a bald guy by the name of One Punch Man. No, One Punch yes. Man is there too. Yes, it is a four-minute video. That is that iconic. I'm telling you right now, it's got blood and guts in it. I, I mean, duh, it has Homelander. <laughs> but it's hilarious. Hilarious. Homelander basically says, I'm going to take care of this guy over here while you two, he talked to Superman and, and uh, Omni-Man. Please you tell guys me One Punch, punch Man out. punches him and then he just is... I can't. I don't want to spoil it. You have to go Dad. watch it. It's hilarious. Okay, what is it called it's again? Hilarious. Tell me. It's just a fan. It just look up Superman versus One Punch Man versus Omni Man versus Homelander. I mean, it, it's four minutes long. It's a fan man, fan made, animated, hilarious, hilarious. That yeah. I don't have any more news. Oh well, I've got one more thing. So okay. there, there is an anime company called. I'm going to mispronounce it. Kodansha. Kodansha, okay. K-O-D-A-N-S-H-A. Okay. Through August the 2nd, they, on wherever you get your um, digital comics, digital anime, whatever, wherever you get them okay. from, the first volume of their manga is free. Ooh, fun. Through August the 2nd. Second volume is 99 cents. And the $2. And the third, vol third volume is $1.99. So you could get three volumes of whatever and and some of them included is attack on titan which i oh, love wow um a fairy tale to your eternity there's about 20 titles but um it's through august the 2nd yeah okay, you so could, if you're into anime or manga check that out yeah but especially you could watch you know read the first volume for and free see through... if you like it exactly like that would be a fun way to i mean oh that's a really cool way to like get yourself introduce yourself to like a and new honestly you get and a three media. volumes for for three bucks i mean honestly that's not, not bad. bad no considering like to buy one volume of something is usually you know around ten dollars 10 15 yeah yeah so that's Depending all i got Nerd cool. news. what are you binging hannah turner all of the that marvel movies new, in order that was my new binging voice love that for you oh i know you're still watching the marvel movies in order. Yes. okay gotcha dad so, what are we on now uh just finished avengers age of ultron so since oh, we've that's... spoken less, I mean, it's the worst Avengers movie easily. Um, the thing, this is what, this is what made me so angry about it, dad. I don't, it's I mean... not that it's awful. It's that the script writing and the dialogue is heinous. Too much. Too the much. Way the whole have... hide the cucumber thing that wasn't needed. That's so stupid. Oh yeah. You didn't even catch that. Well, I'm not going to talk about it because we're family friendly. Um, the the, the mean, way that it... women are written in this film is just dumb. Well, that's Joss Whedon. The things that the, he, that w the women say in this are stupid, especially know... after watching. I'm I used stupid. I mean, it's fine, but after watching like the Black Widow movie well, and then watching her in this, mm -hmm. I'm like, really, you d you did her dirty. They, how, they about did Wanda, how about Wanda losing her accent between that movie and the next movie? <laughs> her, her brother dies and movie, she anyway. loses her ex accent. Her ac accent was very, very bad. It was bad. They shouldn't it was even have tried well, it. But man, the, good, the best part of that movie is Vision. Is Vision by far. The, the way that they introduce fantastic. Vision is very good. He picks up that hammer and he hands it and says, let's go. I mean, that was like, that was great. And seeing um, that in the theaters, do you remember like the palpable, like, what? Okay, the you know, when that happened? do you know what my least favorite part of that movie is? And what? it's throughout the entire movie. I love James Spader as Ultron. He is his the mouth guy moving, doesn't need to move, doesn't Awful. need to move. He is like teeth. Okay. Like, uh, yeah, why does he have teeth? It's dumb. It's for a robot who doesn't like humanity. Why does he act like he's why a does human? he try to be a human? Is Pinocchio for sure. That's why I've got no strings to. Yeah, Man. he's Pinocchio. But I mean, if you watch the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire with mm. the Goblin, his mask is a mask, and he ne and and 
Of course, it's Willem Dafoe, who's fantastic. And he didn't need to have lips move. You don't need it. That was, I hated that. Buh. Uh. We so I watched this with Trev and yeah, he just he commented made the what when move? Captain made meow meow move the meow oh, meow yeah yeah it, it like it like jiggled and we went and back and like, like had to rewatch the scene because I knew Cap, it did. the Thor's face was just like the emotions yes. that he shared on his that was great I did <laughs> love that which was when you get to and, and that's another part where you've missed this you know like we said like um, when you watch Endgame and you haven't seen the other ones. You know, like <laughs> the whole thing with at the end of Endgame where Captain America is beat up all to pieces and he's like, we're going to do this. I'm going to fight him even if I had to. And you're all of a sudden we're you're going to go on your left, on your left. And you're like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Awesome. Just yes. And it just means so much. And I didn't realize it, but with, he says that Captain, because we just so we did oh, he, two that we watched our Winter Soldier. When, he, when he's and, in the hospital when bed, he's in the hospital bed, he says, and he's on your literally left. he wakes up and he looks and he says, on your on left. your left, it and I'm like, so he's great, man. So, I, yeah, and Oof. in the end game, when when Mjolnir goes to Captain America, because you don't really know who it's going to at first, because Thor is fighting mm -hmm. Thanos. And you see it move, you think Thor's getting the hammer, and all of a sudden, kink, it's Captain America. And, and so I, I love the, the fact. Go ahead. You go. No, you go. Go, go, go. Oh, I'm cutting you off. No, Dad, I like go. The, I like it when uh, when Captain America had Stormbreaker and uh, Thor had Mjolnir, and he says, "You take the little one." <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm I'm now now that we're talking about this, something you made me think of is there's always a Captain America and Thor fighting side by side scene in like every Avengers movie. Oh really? I, like there I just really is. Yes. And it's just really cuz uh, meet my friend Tree. <laughs> Steve Rogers. <laughs> is that what he says? <laughs> I am Groot. So is Steve Groot's Rogers. name actually Tree? It has to be. Because he speaks. He's like Groot. meet my friend Tree. Man. Has to be. I love yeah. these these I movies know. are so good. But K Age of Ultron man yeah. and and if Captain it wasn't America saying language like come on i know i know although in, in game when he says that is america's bleep when he's yeah. <laughs> he goes that was spot on iconic Hail so Hydra. yeah that and gravity falls okay well and i go ahead I, I, man some shenanigans are happening with in what gravity this falls? cosmic entity named bill because every triangle. cosmic entity should be called Bill the triangle, triangle man, triangle man, does whatever a triangle can. Is, is it important? Anyway. Um, so, uh, man, and so we, question mark about Bill, the gotcha. cosmic entity. The triangle. Who's a triangle? Mm, nice. We don't know. If anybody is watching my mosaic of um, the Death Star, every background piece is a triangle. So, yeah, there you um, go. Apparently, his name is Bill Cipher. Ooh, I don't like Cipher. It's S Y P H E R. Not C Y Cipher, like that terrible character from Fast and Furious that's going to have her own. Okay, yeah, movie. Charlie Theron with that awful haircut. Yeah, Dad, heinous. Okay. Um, Absolutely heinous. So I am watching. Um, I went back and I, I've been in the Star Trek hole. Oh, I love so, that for you. Where do so you want? So I went. I, well, I went back and watched Star Trek Two, <laughs> The Wrath of Khan. And, we watched um, that together. Yeah. Did we? When? Before anyway. podcast. Long time ago. Gotcha. So I thought, and then that's why we decided we'll talk about Star Trek 4 later. But Well, um, no, because you, you, you talked about Star Trek Voyage Home in a yes. podcast a couple of weeks the ago. The last time. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about that when we get there. But anyway, so I watched Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan. And um, and then we watch another episode of The Chosen, which is really good. Um, I, should I watch that? Yeah, you would like it. Would Just I? Fast, fast I don't forward. know, man. Oh, it's good. The issue with me is that the watching The Chosen, and if people don't know, I'm I'm a Christian, and that's what I believe. And um, the watching The Chosen. Uh, growing up, I've always thought about the deity side of Jesus without really taking into consideration the humanity side. Yeah. Because Jesus was a man mm. and is a man. So he's anyway, 
He walked the earth as a human. And I don't think about that. I mean, we don't think Jesus got tired. Jesus was hungry. Jesus had to go to the bathroom. I mean, really, he was a human. Yeah. He had to do everything we had to do. We experienced everything we experienced and yet still led a sinless life. Yeah. And this show has helped me to see the humanity like side component. of Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Um, the only thing is, is that sometimes on, on YouTube, the guy who directs it and writes it or whatever talks way too Talks much. too long. I don't like it. So I fast forward it. But anyway, that's it. That's what I'm doing. Cool. That's what I'm binging. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still to... I'm up in here saying you need to watch Gravity Falls. All right. I got I know. I hear you. Marianne's mentioned it. Now I've mentioned it. Oh, Marianne. Stay Ma out of it. Marianne. Hello. Don't Dad. push me. I don't feel peer pressure. You're not my peer, so I don't have peer pressure. I'm have, not your peer. I have younger, younger people of pressure. <laughs> whatever that is. The youths. Pressure from yep. the youths. My, from I'm, the youths. Am I youth? You are, you are young. You're an adult. <laughs> Father and adult daughter duo. That's fact. That's a lot of does. What's up now, Hannah? Uh, Comics, your pull list. Okay, friends. If Perchance, you have stumbled upon us on some strange spot on the internet, or perhaps a not-so-strange cozy spot on the internet. Welcome. We're glad that you are here. Yeah, um, thanks for joining in. A pull list, if you are joining in and are like, eh, what's that, Hannah? Friend, I would love to tell you. A pull list is a list of comics that you are collecting that the proprietor of your local comic book shop keeps on hand, so they may pull the comics that you are wanting from their inventory before placing them on the shelves that way your comics are saved for you so my dear papa is an avid comic collector and what he's going to do is he's going to share with us two marvel comics two dc comics two comics from independence um so those are like not the big two like everybody knows about dc and marvel but not everybody knows about boom studios or image comics or what is Yosagi Ojimbo. What is that one? By? IDW. IDW. Aftershock. So, yeah, um, so there's a AWA. lot of really cool independent comic mm -hmm. uh, publishers? Question mark. Studios. Yeah. What would they oh, be today called? they're all today they're all from Image. Just publishers. Yay. Publishers. Mm -hmm. Um. So and then he has a book of the week. Yeah. And so we're talk about that too. I'm gonna throw in an honorable mention first. Oh, uh, we love Shazam. That. Shazam from by DC is putting out a four issue miniseries. And issue one came out. Um, Shazam's powers aren't working the way they should. And oh, no. it's Dang. And, why do they got to be doing that? They always are copying each other. Like one, like they're always copying each other. Who knows? Because th that's why this is just an honorable mention and not one of my, yeah. I, it was saying, okay. I'm just saying. I know. So my first book is a Marvel book called okay, Savage Avengers. Oh, issue we like 22. Savage Avengers. You've mentioned them like, before. I have. Um, the story is taken forever. They're on issue 22. It's chapter 22. So a lot of times these stories will have story arcs that last for three to four issues. But this one's 22. 22 issues. Oh. issues. And it really just stars Conan with other. The barbarian. Would you like Conan? Which I like. Mm -hmm. He's now trapped in modern day. What happens is he gets sucked into um, Johnny Blaze, who's the original Ghost Rider's dreams. So Johnny oh, Blaze no. is Ghost Rider, and he gets pulled into Johnny Blaze's dreams. And the cover of this comic book is what sold it for me. It's Ghost Rider riding a giant flaming spider. Okay, so, I have to, you have to show it to us, yeah, the people that so, are online. Um, anybody that's online, you can... It's yeah, so that's like, cool. That's iconic. And um, so you come to find out that uh, he has to end up fighting Ghost Rider from like the past, way past, who's got a, instead of a motorcycle, he's riding a giant spider. And you come to find out he's actually inside Ghost Rider's dream because the entity known as Nightmare, which is a Marvel character, which sort of on par with Dormammu, before. he's sort of on par with Have Mephisto I, and Dormammu. Do Nightmare? He's all dressed in green. He looks like he's real pale. Anyway, Is it a nightmare? No, nightmare with an N. Um, the interesting thing about this is nightmare can't contact Conan. Do you know why, Anna? Because nightmare... they don't speak the same language. No, because Conan doesn't have nightmares. I need so you know has... I love that so much. He had to pull him into one of Ghost Rider's nightmares. 
in order to contact him because he wants him to help battle this evil wizard because inside that evil wizard's nightmare he is afraid his biggest nightmare is conan and you get to see conan's uh worst nightmare that he ever has and it's him being like 100 years old and laying on the bed because he he dies of old age that's what he that's what his nightmare is so anyway the book ends with him having to go uh meet with dr strange to battle this wizard so yeah it was cool that's cool yeah i know a nightmare is from something i tried to google it i know how much you love oh. when i google things dad nightmare apparently it's a is... skylander but that's not i think oh, maybe yeah. it's in like fey lore or something like that well there is a character called night uh i think well maybe not. i don't know i don't know anyway like yeah. i keep picturing this like dark like pitch black horse well that's nathan wrote a story about that as a kid about maybe. a nightmare Oh, that's what that's what it that's was. That's what it is. Yeah, he wrote a story How about a. Do I have that in my memory? I don't know. Someplace. Same reason you got, uh, you know, my favorite uh, whatevers. I'm just great at remembering things. You are. You're great. You're welcome. Of. So my next comic is um, <laughs> Undiscovered Country issue 14. Image by Image. Ha! Mm -hmm. Knew it. Knew and it. This is a comic book about a group of people who've been pulled into the United States, which was walled off. Oh, we talked about this before. At the beginning, uh, they just walled off the entire United States, and um, no one comes in, no one goes out. Now there's a massive pandemic going around the world, and the United States um, offered them uh, where uh, offered them back in, but when they got in there, they found out that the entire United States is all jacked up. There, there are like 13 different zones, and they have to walk what they call the spiral to get to the middle before they can escape. We had talked and, about this, I think. Yes. Right. So in this issue, they're in the land of possibility. Right. So it's like, means. well, what all the things that in America, pop culture that made America, America. So um, like gangster movies and, uh, you know, rap music or whatever. And in this issue, this girl is held captive by superheroes because they don't have anyone left to protect. So they're like, they're keeping her because they have to protect her. And mm -hmm. um, since this is by Scott, Scott Snyder, um, who writes all these crazy, he wrote uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal, the thing that we talked oh, about. Oh, like, you like them. Yeah. It was over the top. So it's mm. really cool how they uh, weave in the comic. It has like heroes. a Wizard of Ozzy kind of vibe, like a dystopian yeah, Wizard of Oz. So they're not allowed out know. of this. Yeah, and, and a, the, there was a TV show on like sci fi or something like that where the United States had been like pushed into like two countries and you. Never. I don't mind. know. I don't I know. know. I literally maybe it was a book I read. Gotcha. Like at this point, man, mm -hmm. there's well, these so people many aren't allowed. Things. They're not allowed to go to the next zone until they write a new American masterpiece. Create, not write. They have to create an American masterpiece. So we so have no idea doing? what that looks like. I don't know. They're. I don't know. What would that we'll be like? Out. Tom Sawyer or like a I painting? Have no clue. Or? We'll find out. What is it? Issue twelve or fourteen? Issue 14. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be a movie or a TV show. So, man, Pre I love when you say it. that because it makes me excited and I want to watch mm -hmm. them. There were so <laughs> many good independent comic books this, uh, this week. I could have just done independent, just comics. straight independent. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. fun. So, my next one is Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, issue two. I talked about issue one. Yes. Issue two is just as, is fantastic. Is I'm it not still that red, like tint? Yes. It's still. And, but she's slowly getting her power back because she and this uh, girl have hitched a ride. They're trying to get to Earth. a place to get, you no, know, to get to this guy who killed. Because I think the dog might not be alive. Crypto from the last, I don't know. So now, no. I know, I know. I'm not sure. No. It doesn't look good. But no, this art and the writing in this is so good. It's got no. such a feel of um you know like a you know like a samurai helping a young person take vengeance upon their Which, family like, or we're here for that vibe except or, yeah. except 
47 Ronin with Keanu Reeves. That Where they vibe all kill themselves was, at the end. was too much. Yeah. I We're like the movie. That kind of vibe. No. Okay. So my next book is also a DC book. It's a no, okay. and also a number one. It's called Blue and Gold. It's a one of eight. So if somebody wants to hop on. Okay. So this um, is a good thing to collect if we yeah. wanted to. Yeah. It's okay. just eight issues. Um, Blue well, and Gold? Super, yeah. Supergirl's just going to be eight issues and Shazam's just going to be four. Those are all DC, okay, yeah, which is so what DC is doing. DC is, I like it. I think that I, think I hate to say that. No, I don't think that you have to hate to say that. I think that mm -hmm. is an interesting marketing tool because it makes. Yeah. I'm here for any type of fandom making what they love more accessible for newbies. Here's the deal. Also, a lot of these characters are to do, and people have a story to tell, but they can tell the story in say four to twelve issues, whereas an ongoing comic book series Has sales will not. Going. The sales aren't there. Mm -hmm. So if they tell a story in four to 12 issues, people will go, yeah, I'll hang for that long, you know? So this is blue and gold and it stars two of my favorite night, late eighties characters, booster gold and blue beetle. Booster I know gold. blue beetle. Mm -hmm. So I know booster blue gold beetle. is like a guy who steals a uh, legionnaire's ring from the future and comes back to the past and is trying to be a superhero. And blue beetle is like a tech, wizard and um it's like a buddy thing but the, everything they seem to do falls apart um my biggest like issue buddy cops, but not really sorta the biggest thing about it it's it opens up with booster gold trying to get into the justice league i want to be part of the justice league he's doing everything on social media everything so it's like hey what's up and the, the thing that drives me crazy is all the little bubbles that they have on the panels where people are responding to his stuff like comments section, you know, they're like, oh, this guy's toast. He ain't going to make it. They're like, <laughs> what a rip off, you know, that kind of stuff. This and he's like, toast. yeah. And he's like trying to say, you know, don't forget to, instead of Patreon, I think it's called pay me please or whatever. Don't forget to, you know, hit pay me please or whatever. I can't remember what pay it's called. Pay me please. Yeah. So he tries to literally save the Justice League who are held captive and, He's getting cremated and his little robot Skeets, which just floats around, goes to get Blue Beetle and says he needs your help. Mm. So together they literally rescue the Justice League. Good. So the Justice League have a discussion and they're like, yay. Join us, please. No, they want Booster. To, they don't want Booster. They want Blue Beetle. <sighs> so Blue Beetle says, no, I can't. I'm Not staying with my, my buddy. Friend. And it looks like it might be neat. If they continue this dag on social media pop-up garb, I ain't for that. Other than that, it the thing about it is it's written by the guy who created Booster Gold. Oh, so, that's fun. That is fun. Dan Jurgens. So is that person name. knows the mm -hmm. character well and is able yeah. to write them well, I'm sure. Yeah. That's fun. Um, my next uh, book is issue six of an image comic book called Radiant Black, and we've talked uh. about it before. Pretty much every time you get a Radiant Black, you talk about it's, it. It's good. Um, so back a few issues ago. There was a cliffhanger. Um, there, well, like a couple issues back, there was a bad guy, Radiant Red. The red mm -hmm. one was the villain. Well, it ain't a guy, first of all. First and foremost, it's a woman. Ayo. And, and you come to find out why she's bad. Okay, she why? isn't bad at all. Oh. She's not bad at all. Her husband has a gambling addiction or oh, something like man. that and has basically put their entire family, her mom and dad, her, like everything they own. Ugh. And she robs, she to pay off these bookies and people that owe money. So man. it literally is a standalone issue. This is a good issue for people to hop in mm. if they want, because I have a feeling that the, and you, it's really character. It's great. Uh, really character good. Driven. This, Every issue of this is fantastic. That's so yeah. fun, Dad. Yeah. Um, my last book is also an issue one. A lot of issue ones is Moon Knight by Marvel no. Comics. Oh, Moon really? Yep. Moon Knight. Yeah. So this is fresh off where the Fist of Conchu tried to take over the world in Avengers. With the, the devil eating the yes. piece of... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was weirdy. Oh, oh. And um, so what's happened is in or for Moon Knight to be free... Um, the Avengers have mandated him to go to counseling. Good. So he is in counseling. I mean, maybe not he, good. Court mandated. He has created he, he has created a thing called the Midnight Mission, where people who are in trouble 
um, like with creatures or things going on, they come to him and not hit anybody who's being harmed during the night. They come to him and he goes and he fixes it. Cutie. So it is, it looks like it's going to get a little bit uh, bonkers. Hardcore. At the, at the end, they introduce a, another character who believes that Moon Knight as the Fist of Khonshu is not fulfilling the will of Fist of Khonshu. Man, so there's another... why do you always got to have people up in here like you are not? Worthy. Yeah. So he is a follower. Man. He is a follower of um, Kanchu as well. Oh and man! So yeah. All right. Are you ready for my book of the week? Book of the week. Okay. What is so it? So this is issue one by Image Comics. Ooh yay! Called Mother of Madness or Mom. This is written. I didn't realize it, but by somebody who was on um, Game of Thrones. Cool. Uh, Amelia Who? Clark. Amelia oh, Clark. Really? Yeah. Dad, no. You know her. She no, is. Yeah, you do. Amelia Clark. She was in the Han Solo film. She was well, the brunette was in the Han Solo film. I don't know. The one who the young Han was in love with. Oh, really? Yeah, I do yeah. remember her. Okay. Well, she wrote this. So I thought, here's the deal. I wasn't going to read this. I wasn't going to get it. But I read it because of I have two daughters and a wife, and it has a lot to do with feminine issues and cool. um, uh, imp women empowerment. And um, it is a really good book. It is extremely wordy. There are a lot of words, a lot of dialogue, a lot, but it's well done. And literally at one point, the character says, listen, you set through. Uh, 10 years of Marvel movies, you can sit through a couple pages of dialogue. <laughs> she literally, because she breaks the Shoot, fourth wall. Dang. I know. She she breaks the fourth That's wall cool. throughout this entire That's comic. Fun. I don't, I, and you basically get her origin like, story. Okay. Is she a right? like superhero or? She has multiple powers that are affected by her emotions and the hormones that cause those emotions. Okay. So Fair. like when she laughs or is happy, she has a power. When she's angry, she has a power. When she's sad, she has a different power. There are all these multiple powers that. I like that. Oh, it's, and it lists it in the back. It shows in the very back what her powers are cool. and what causes each one of the powers. Mm -hmm. And um, there's also, you know how, I can't remember if it was Adventure Man, which by the way, a new, a new issue of Adventure Man is coming out in the next month. That's fun. Um, so there's a list in the back of phone numbers for people to contact for if they have um, like for trafficking or That's suicide awesome. or uh, racism or um, sexual harassment or yeah. So yeah. it's really good and I'm going to continue to get it. So cool. you'll want to read it because it's great. The only thing that makes me a little bit nervous is a lot of the work that I do as a mental health professional is helping people understand that their emotions are not in charge of the behaviors that they do. Well, no, here's the deal. And what I gather from this is that they are not in charge of her. Okay. She uses the emotions. She uses them to help people. Okay, cool. Like she rescued, she tried to rescue a woman who was in the middle of human trafficking, but she, the person passed. Oh, because man. she couldn't get to her in time but it's so neat sad. because at the end she like beats somebody up and it's like oh there's a camera i'm coming for you i'm gonna get every one of you hey -oh. crushes the camera pew, pew, pew. So, yeah so it's really interesting yeah cool. i like it cool. on a sad note um uh, my comic book guy said he's leaving his shop at the end of august so oh, that's really sad got to figure out what i'm gonna do i mean yep all right. Lexington, probably. I don't know. We'll see. So, Hannah, Dad. let's do Star Trek. <laughs> Guys, we're going to talk Star Trek, the rap, uh, the rap, the rap, the rap, the rap, the voyage home. Um, a new hope. It isn't. Oh, gosh. No, it's not a new. That's Star Wars. Who said that? <laughs> I mean, that, I need you to know I literally on my thing. It literally Star just says, Trek, a new wheels. hope. No, it nice. doesn't. It just says humpback. <laughs> That's what my the, Let me give <laughs> let me give some lowdown, okay? It literally just says humpback whales. Okay, nice. I'm done. Let me give some lowdown. 
Uh, Star yes, Trek sir. Four: The Voyage Home came out in 1986. So we're re- we're talking about it because this summer um, is the 35th anniversary, and it's going to be re-released in select theaters. So if you want to go watch it, you should go watch it. It was nominated for four Oscars, and really? it was di- yeah, it didn't win any, but it was nominated. It was directed cool. by Spock himself, Leonard Nimoy, fresh off directing the third um, movie, which was called Search for Spock. If you oh, want, well, he loves himself. Well, he wasn't really in the third movie, which was why he could di- spend Direct all this time directing sense. it. I'm um, with he was you. barely in it. Um, so this movie started filming February twenty fourth, nineteen eighty six, just a month after the space after the space shuttle Challenger exploded. So if you watch this movie, oh, wow. and you can see this movie on Hulu, it's free on Hulu. Um. So they dedicate this movie to the space, the the crew of the space it, yeah, they shuttle say that. challenger at the very beginning. Interesting footnote is that one of I was a senior in high school when this movie started filming, and um, I am um, uh, I was a senior in high school when this started filming, and mm-hmm. my high school band teacher was one of the finalists as the teacher to go in the space shuttle, so. Yes, we watched this when the space shuttle lifted off. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, it was released so in sad. November 26, which means if we were a family, then we would have saw it at Thanksgiving because <laughs> it Yay. came out Thanksgiving weekend. Um, <laughs> now, Hannah, yes. tell me what you think. What's the movie about? I have, I have a list of, again, I, again, made a list on my phone. Um, like much like when I watched Aliens and have just some like notes and things that just made me giggle throughout the film. It just, just man, just go watch it. It just makes you giggle. Um, it's literally called Humpback Whales. That's how I have it listed <laughs> because they have to go back in time to rescue humpback whales to save themselves from an energy sucking probe. That was making a sound that they couldn't hear, but Spock was like, "I wonder what it would sound like if you played it underwater." And uh, was like, "Oh yeah, Ahura was I like, oh yes, that. I shall do that." And it's whale song. The cool thing about this movie is, um, <laughs> if you can, you can tell that it was pretty much written by two different people. So there is space, and then it's on mm. Earth. Um, mm-hmm. And there are very few special effects. Yeah, there's not. Very limited. Limited special effects. It's almost all filmed on location, which got, which a lot of people said, I um, mean, actually, it did great uh, um, in the box office for its time. A lot of people said it really gave the characters a place to shine and act. Yeah. Because in a lot of the other ones, they don't. It's just a lot of fighting and pew pewing and all that kind of My- stuff. They talk about time warp, and I. Oh, it's just I, all I, of a sudden, like, yeah, of course we can. It's do that. like it's like oh yes, we can time warp, and I'm like, let's do the time warp again. I thought oh that my was gosh! Funny. My yeah, favorite how- is that they get to, they get to the 80s. They time warp to the 80s, which and- to 1986 actually to our time. Yeah. Oh, then Ahura's, it was the 80s Ahura's- because it. Yeah, go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. No, you go, Dad. No, you go. Ahura is like Admiral. I'm detecting whale song. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what? Well, she has to because they needed to save the world. This is so funny, Admiral. I'm detecting whale song. Do you know what the funny part was? Is we were watching this and in the background, mom, mom was sitting on the couch and she's like, "Wait, is that San Francisco?" Because, <laughs> because that's where Starfleet is, San Francisco. Which I've always said, if if. You never want to be in San Francisco. Stay away from man, San Francisco. San, Everything. San Francisco and New York. New York. Man. Just don't. Just, just be in don't. Kentucky. It's all cool. Be in, in Kentucky. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing happening here. Mark Twain said, "If the world came to an end, you want to be in Cincinnati because everything happened ten years later there." <laughs> so there you go. It's a fact. Yeah. Um, my one of my favorite parts about this is they literally just park this giant ship. Romul- the Vulcan. Romulan. Vulcan, Romulan. No, Romulan, Romulan ship. ship that has cl- that's been cloaked in the middle of a park while these two men are just doing their jobs. They yeah, flatten trash, the trash can. 
And they don't even like a trash can. I ain't talking. They're about like, it. we're out of here, man. They're Peace. like, we ain't doing this. Yeah. Like, I never saw anything. And then they each have their own little things that they have to do. So they have to get this like plexiglass. Where so do you to, like, find the nuclear vessels? The nuclear they, vessels. A Russian man looking and for a black nuclear woman vessels looking in for the nuclear 80s. vessels in the eighties, going up good. to a cop. Yeah, and he's just and looking just at him. Walk, and he's just looking at him like, "Are you like you all are you, like Do you, you know, good?" I wonder if that cop was an actor or if that was just like. They just, just like a dude, a police there. officer on the side of the like, road, dude, and when I'm asking, just stand here so we can just talk to you for a second. And be like, and Jack was like, nuclear. <laughs> he can't even says, say vessels. He can't say vessels, right? Yeah. <laughs> I like how they they basically um, entrust their entire lives to a guy who just had Vulcan brain surgery. You know, mm -hmm. Spock just had his brain rearranged. You know. Man, so, it's just Scotty talking to like the egg. computer. Because yes, and did you like, look at like, the? Did you see the computer he was using? Mm -mm. It was an OG Mac. It was, was like, not. It was like the first Mac desktop computer. Yes, that's so cool. It said Macintosh on it. I was like, oh my gosh! And he's like, computer, computer, and they like, and, and then like, then then picks, Bones hands in the. And, Hands in the hands in the mouse the, the and he mouse puts it up goes, to his head and goes, no, he "Hello, computer." It. Yeah, he ta Hello, yeah, he's like talking to it. <laughs> and they're like keyboard. And then he and the funny thing was is that the guy says you have to use a keyboard. I say keyboard. How quaint. I said that out loud. And then your mom's watching it and Scotty goes keyboard. How quaint. And she's like, I can't believe you even saw that. Just know that freaking <laughs> How many every times have movie. you seen this? Uh, the way Man, bazillion. Uh, bazillion. Spock rips a piece of his robe off and ties it around like his head. Like a bandana like me. He can't see his ears. Yeah. And he's just, yeah. and then he they, go to, they go to see these whales. And it's just these people being like, oh, we need to procure money. Like, Mm -hmm. They oh they use money now, and there's this woman who like helps them with the whales, and on the they take the bus to this like it's like Sea World but it's not Correct. it's like a right. preservation I, I know. right for whales Sea World mm -hmm. Sea World ish gotcha. Sea World light if you will go oh, I and gotcha. <laughs> he Vulcan pinches this a punk head kid. like a punk rocker listening to punk I rock kid. hate like, listen. you I hate you. Yeah, the, the Vulcan so, bitch was so good. And they they are like throwing around cuss words left and right because they call them colorful metaphors. And uh, Captain Kirk's like, well, I, you have to use that language here because that's what everybody says. Everybody uses that language here. So the funny thing is that Spock peppers Spock in cuss Spock words. Can't, Spock can't do it. He has no clue, which is hilarious. And um, so it's PG-13. Um, but you know it's it's harmless uh i i love you ahead. go no go so yeah spock swimming in the in the and thing, he looks like he's wearing a diaper mind mind melding with the uh the, with the whale. whale so the whole thing is they gotta how the, do you know she's yeah. pregnant she did gracie knows she's pregnant she bleep told me um my <laughs> She the, she the bleep told me, is what he says. <laughs> My favorite thing was Chekhov getting stuck in this this poor Russian man getting stuck in this nuclear ship. The Enterprise. And them, like, the, the Enterprise. And he, like, escapes. And as he's running away, I need you to know that if you, look, if you pause, mm -hmm. there's an arrow that says escape route pointing the right way how to go so that literally says escape way. route with an arrow and he follows because like man we've yeah. been on an aircraft carrier yeah those it's things, hard to get out of it you it's lost. hard to get out of those things you can get lost in those things 10 years ago today i think really yeah we were so yeah. and yeah, then so, my favorite is that uh is that bones goes to the hospital to like help save him <laughs> good and lord he's, man like, <laughs> he's he like this. He this woman is sitting there on dialysis, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he, he just her hands a her a bill, he and she just kidneys. takes it. Then <laughs> she as they're leaving, she's yeah. in a wheelchair and she's raising her hand up and yeah. down. And she said, "The doctor gave me a pill, and I grew a new kidney." Kidney, yeah, woohoo! I grew a just kidney. I grew a kidney. It's just so yeah. funny. It's just so, so funny. Yeah. 
there you go. Here's the deal, guys. It was guys. good. You should watch Star Trek II, Star Trek Three, and Star Trek Four. It's the perfect Star Trek trilogy. Um, watch two and three, and then go see four in the theater. Um, and it yeah, caps it all why not? off. Yeah. What do you think? How many um, how many phaser <sighs> how many banks would you give this? Hump. I would give it five humpback whales. How many humpback whales? whales? Five. Five humpback whales. Five humpback whales. Okay, so we don't have a whole lot of time, but Hannah and I read a comic book called Why the Last Man. The reason I had us read this was because this is being made into a TV show by FX, which should come on Hulu in September. Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. What happens, Hannah? Give me the lowdown from someone who's okay. never read this. It is a little bit hard to follow because it jumps often. There's lots of jumping points. The first points. issue, for sure. Uh, mm, throughout. Especially the first issue, but like throughout. It like jumps from spot mm -hmm. to spot. Um, gotcha. All beings with the Y chromosome, so not just humans, but like animals, fish, livestock, pets, um, all beings with the Y chromosome perish. Yes. They just randomly die. Except for except for one guy and his pet monkey, his capuchin monkey, Appersand. It felt very that movie that we watched during COVID. That's not Contagion, but is like Contagion and Patrick Dempsey and the monkey. That's what that oh, man yeah. made me think of. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I can't remember what that. That's with uh, Dustin Hoffman. Um, yeah, got gotcha. you. So he's the only one that that's that lives. And his mom is like a senator or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. And poor guy His, was proposed. Uh, okay. Mm. Don't propose to your girlfriend on the phone <laughs> while she's in Australia. I think, yeah. I think the thing was is that he wanted, he had to, he had to do it. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah. So, and then what happens is they try to, um, there are, there are some main characters that are at play here. His mom, who you said is in the House of Representatives. Oh, she's um, not a senator. Excuse me. She's a representative. Yeah, House of Representatives. Agent 355, who is part of a secret special government, secret something, government something. spy ring, something or whatever. Who went um, and found the Secretary of Agriculture because she became the President of the United States because she was the only person that the, had the highest ranking was, official is still alive. Female. Because still everyone alive. else was male. I think this had a lot to say about exactly. Now, this was written in 2002, so this was written 20 years ago. Okay, fair. It lasted, fair. I'm sorry, it lasted six years. It was co written by Brian K. Vaughn and Pia Guerrera, who is so ma male and female. So, mm. and actually, the TV show, I cool. believe uh, Pierre, Pia Guerrero is doing most of the writing. Um, That's awesome. So, I like when stuff is adapted by the original mm -hmm. writer. So, Dr. Allison Mann is the geneticist and cloning specialist who we think. Caused the this. moment that the clone is born, but doesn't isn't born, dies, right? Mm, clones not Everyone, alive. all the people die. Um, and then there's this militant group called the Daughters of Amazon. Man, and they hate men now. <clears throat> yeah. And ugh. so I want you to know this. So the character's name is Yorick. Yorick, who von Lichtenstein. His, no, his name is Yorick. Von his, his name is not Von Lichtenstein. Yorick. It's from Hamlet's. Ha it's from Hamlet. Shakespeare's I was Hamlet. Making a Knight's Tale joke. I got you. I understand. That is funny. Okay, thank you. The, okay, do you know the whole scene where Hamlet is holding a skull and says, "Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him well." So Yorick. But I do now. Okay, so Yorick is the was the king's jester that Hamlet played with that he rode piggyback and he told stories and he did all this kind of stuff. Gotcha. And basically the whole entire thing was symbolizing the in in inescapability of death and decay. That's what the whole thing about Yurik. Yeah. Cool. And his sister's name is hero, which is from the Shakespearean play much ado about nothing. I know much ado about nothing. Yeah. Um, so anyway. that's, I watched that. I watched, wait, that's with <clears throat> Catherine. No, that's Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, no. I watched Taming of the Shrew Beatrice, in the Globe think, Theater. In, uh, gotcha. I've not seen. Only thing I've done is Hamlet. We read Hamlet. I haven't read Much Ado About Nothing. So, yes. Yeah, so, Agent 355 and Yorick 
go to find the geneticist. And then something explodes. Her her, her lab. And we think the Amazon oh, did it. There, no, 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 no. There's another character named Alter who is an Israeli She's in freedom fighter. An yeah. Israeli commando. So it seems like she wants... Like if they're going to get clone men or whatever, she wants them to be able to fight the Palestinians. I mean, really, this is a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, um, and it's it's kind of hard to follow. Maybe it's not. It it was hard for me to follow. I got you. I mean, I didn't dislike it. It wasn't my favorite thing that we've read. No, you could definitely see that it was it was written twenty years ago. The yeah. language and the way. Um, I do think it has a lot to say about how women were per- are perceived in in the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, I mean, basically, I mean, one part in the comic book, the the wives of the senators and representatives that were Republicans, because the here's White the House. deal. Okay, here's the deal. So when all the men die, most like they say there were very few women in the Senate and in the and House in of Congress. Representatives, and yeah. in the majority of them are Democrats Mm -hmm. because the majority of the women were Democrats. So there are very few Republicans. Now the Democrats hold a majority. Um, And so their wives want to take over their husband's seats, which traditionally is something that occurs if an election takes place. Yeah. And yeah, um, so that was a whole thing. One of the, one of the Republican Senator wives accidentally shoots and kills a secret service agent. And they're it's like, just, yeah, it's just held really, it's just really sad. It is. It's end of the world type stuff because it was just, and I, I think maybe that's what it was. Maybe it wasn't that it was hard to read. It's just, what would the end of the world look like? And I like, I tend to like those sort of like types mm-hmm. of media. Like, I think that gotcha. they're fun and they're interesting. Mm-hmm. Usually when I read them, it's, it's like YA fiction or something like that, or like, a TV show or something like that. And you only see like one person's perspective and it's lighter perhaps. Yeah. Well, this we like, did. Oh, farts. We did only read the first, first one six. tenth yeah. of the story. So I'm, I'm sure it gets a lot better. I know what happens. What happens? Tell me. Do you want me to tell you? Let me spoil everybody. Cause it's going to okay. be a TV show. We're going to spoil you. So if this is something that you care a lot about, if you are really excited about listening to why You're the last watching the new man show standing and watching the new show, you it's need not to the last off. man, not last man standing. Oh, why the last man? man. Yeah. <laughs> the first story arc is called Unman. So what happens is you come to find out that um, Alice, Dr. Man's father is, is alive. And that Appersand was one of his cloning creature, cloned creatures. They never really come out and say why Everybody those died. three males are alive and everyone else dies. Okay, they never really why. come out. No, but they That's go dumb. on I this. Want a reason. They go on this journey. Um, uh, they end up getting to you know they go to California to try to mm. find this person, and then they go overseas. Do they, they go to Australia? They go to Australia. By the time they get to Australia, Yurik realizes he's in love with Agent 355. Who is surprised by that? No one. I know. And she is killed. Um, she He ends up not even, he ends up with someone completely different. Um, they do end up cloning Yurik. Of course and, they do. And um, he has uh, two daughters. But it's funny. They have, they have children and they're both girls. How funny is that? So the first two people born are women and they end up becoming like uh, like a president of France or something like that awesome. or whatever. But then the uh, everything starts to stabilize and they've cloned men so that they will be able to um, do all of that. And um, he is it, the the story ends with Yurik like 90 years old or whatever. And they he, they say he's gone crazy because of what he's stories he's told and everything. And they've got him in a straight jacket, which is interesting because they have him in a straight jacket in the very the beginning be- and in he the very beginning. And he's a skate um, artist. And uh, so that's how it ends him as a 90 year old or 80 something year old in an, in an insane asylum in a uh, straight jacket. 
And um, then there's some other stuff goes on and then you go back and the jacket is empty and he's gone. And that's the end of the story. Weird. So a lot of stuff does happen. Yeah. That's bonkers, dad. I know. So I'm interested how this is going to work, how they're going to do it. But I just thought it would be interesting to look at because they are going to turn. No, they, yeah. I could see how FX would do a good job. Yeah. There like, you, go. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if, I think if this was going to be a show somewhere, it would be on FX or sci-fi. Or Netflix or sci-fi. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, so, like, I didn't think it was bad. It, it was a product of its time. I think that's the issue. Yeah. I think that if it was written today, I it would think not it be would, the same. No. And I'm pretty sure that when they move it from the book to the screen. That they might have that, to change some things to make it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, that makes yeah. sense. All right. Well, thanks, folks, for hanging with us. And Yay! staying throughout the doodad. And if you um, aren't here because we spoiled, almost spoiled you, it might be. Yeah, you're still here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys don't care. <laughs> well. Hey. Five star review, yo. Whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. If you like us and you like our podcast, please leave us a five star review. On if you don't like podcasts. us, leave us a five star review. And if you are indifferent, because that's what us, it means. Write us a five star review. All reviews are five star mandatory. <laughs> hey. Our logo. Our yeah. So end roll, y'all. Um. Our um. I can logo our logo our, our logo our it? little picture thing was created yeah. by nathan he's my little brother hey he did that in microsoft paint can you believe what that a what pro. a talented nugget i can't even get a straight line in my and paint. i can't get a straight. <laughs> that's a that's a fact um our intro music is written composed and performed by uh brockwell, brockwell mason, mason who i saw today with a rock in the beard i mean it's nice like beard right now it's pretty on point man i'm here for that i'm here for him yeah to have a nice he's beard. got some good music on spotify hannah calls it driver's license i don't know what that driver's means. license is a cover of a, li- a song by olivia rodrigo he also has other original songs if you're not interested in the cover his music's pretty good um our youtube page is maintained by your ye old big pops yeah, Thanks for doing me, that. Big pops. <laughs> <laughs> and i edit and upload the podcast hey We're so glad you all are here, sweet friends. Thanks for hanging with us. And we will catch you on the flippity flop. Catch you on the flippity flop. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for hanging with us, Facebook friends and YouTube Watcher Honors. Watcher Honors. Whatever that's called. Words. Yeah, thanks for... If you guys have any clue how to change the order in which my videos appear on YouTube, hit hit a brother up because I don't get it. (laughs) I, I did, looked everywhere. The, like your channel page? Are they in the wrong order? Know. Okay, well, we could. Okay. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Bye.